And I am also very pleased to be here this morning and to be releasing the results of the 2018 primary living examination, PLE, which was done on the 5th and the 6th of November, 2018. I'd like to thank the chairperson of the board, the executive secretary and staff of UNEP for working so hard always to ensure that these results are always released in time. And I believe this has also been made possible by the hard work of all examiners and the other people who participated at the various stages during the processing of these results. The early release of the results enables the ministry to carry out other activities, such as senior one and technical schools as selections, early enough for the selected students to start term one at about the same time with other continuing learners in schools. Once again, I note that more girls have been registered for the examination than boys, as you heard, and uh, the gap has been widening over the last uh, four years. This means that uh, perhaps our parents are taking the education of the girl child seriously. That's my hope and uh, everybody's hope this side of the room. Um, while this is laudable because of the obvious positive impact on development caused by educating women, it is time also that uh, we should wonder what is happening to the boy child. Because both these, ch these children are our children, and the whole struggle with the girl child has been to bring her to the level where the boys are. So one wonders whether they are, the boys are now dropping out of school, or whether it is the population demographics at play, or whether we need to deep, dig deeper and find out the factors responsible which should be avoided. Um, it is important that uh, we try to identify and address those issues so that we don't leave it for any time longer because we don't want to have the similar problem like we had with the girls to have the boys now going down because that, that will ensure that the, the society will never be at par, which is really what we are all fighting to get. The chairperson has reported that this year's candidature increased by 3.9%, much better than the 0.8% of the previous year. If this is a positive response to my appeal to the district last year, I am very happy to, to know. I will reiterate that, uh, that appeal that no unnecessary barriers should be placed before our learners to hamper their progress, forcing those who have remained in school up to primary seven to repeat will lead to dropouts, wastage, and frustrate government efforts of providing universal education. I know that uh, some districts imagine that this is one way of showing improved results. I do not agree because there are better strategies, including effective teaching, that will not involve eliminating those who have struggled to remain in school. I wish to appeal to all supervisors, especially at the local government level, to ensure reduced absenteeism of head teachers now. Because if the head teachers are the ones absent, teachers automatically become absent, and the teachers, sorry, the learners. So really, 
we can't shout enough to, to say that uh, it is important that head teachers must be at school every working day to ensure that the school runs as it ought to do. So I uh, reiterate indeed that the head teachers supervise the, the teaching and learning process on a daily basis because as a ministry, we believe and we have said many times that the head teacher is the first inspector. It is regrettable that some learners missed the examination because they discovered too late that they had not been registered despite their parents having paid registration fees. It is also regrettable that some of the schools where these children were learning, uh, were learning from were unregistered or had been closed by the local authorities and were therefore unknown both to the Ministry of Education and also to UNEP. As you all know, my ministry has worked so hard to close these illegal schools. And I hope that everybody really supports us in this endeavor. We don't just close schools to make it difficult for children to get to uh, schools at a long distance. We close schools which we think are not giving education. And we need people to support us in this endeavor and not to allow teachers to start now operating in residential houses as schools and then at exam time, they just leave the children on their own to suffer the consequences. Some of those schools we closed have reopened and they continue to operate with the full knowledge of the local leadership and uh, the local governments. We have already issued a reminder to all relevant authorities to the effect that no private school will be allowed to operate during the 2019 school year without a valid license issued by the ministry. I appeal very strongly to the leaders to support this ministry. This ministry is everybody's ministry. This is, we are just servants of everybody in the area of education. So we appeal to everybody to really give us the support they can so that we can give valuable education to our children. Um, so the ministry is enforcing minimum standards and ensuring that such schools once closed must only reopen when facilities meet the minimum requirements for the teaching and learning process and the school has acquired a legal status to operate. We continue to dupe the parents and cause a lot of pain to the children who at the last moment find out that they cannot write the examination they had worked hard to prepare for. And I want to appeal here now to leaders and to members of parliament, even if there are any here, to really mobilize the parents in our communities and to inform them that it's important for parents to know what type of schools their children are really getting the education from. Early enough, instead of waiting to, be, to have these reports at the last minute when the children have not sat exams, when others have finished exams. There had been calls, of course, and you, you, you've heard, I'm sure, through the media, that a supplementary examination should be administered to the pupils who were affected. Now, while I appreciate the sentiments behind such calls, 
The position of the ministry is that this is not possible for several reasons. As I said last, uh, last year, candidates in a particular cohort of learners must be assessed using the same instruments. A supplementary examination can only be possible where, for some reason, like a natural disaster, a large, of, a large number of candidates have not been able to write the examination. Now, this is not the case when small groups of children fail to see to the examinations, and then we are, we are told to repeat a national examination for those very small groups of people who missed out because they did not take responsibility in time to find out where their children are going to have these examinations from. Now, setting, a, setting and administering an examination under this condition opens an avenue now for abuse of, of the system. The unscrupulous owners of such schools will continue to swindle money from unsuspecting parents, and then they vanish if they know that the system will set another examination. The cost of preparing, administering, marking, and processing results of such an examination is too high to be justified. In any case, the question comes up, who would pay those costs? This practice is not supported by evidence of best practice elsewhere. So I encourage parents to always ensure that they check the status of the schools to which they enroll their children, or even on whether their children have actually been registered or not. Before closure of the registration process by UNEP, in order to avoid this problem, we have encouraged UNEP to institute an online mechanism for verifying the registration status of candidates and or examination centers in good time. And you've heard them report to you here. They have tried to make this process so simple for people to really know all the time how their children stand. Through the process of, of registration, any parent, so every, it seems as if every parent now has a, a phone. But what is that phone for if it can't really help you to find out whether your child is registered for exam if they've been at school for seven years and they've been waiting for this year to sit their exam. What is the use of that phone? And there is a system now that, that makes, it makes it possible for you to use your phone in your kitchen and find out what is the status of your child. I applaud the measures the UNEB chairperson has announced. Other measures, which I will come to later, should still be sought to help the parents and protect the children. These measures should cover the other examinations as well, but the local and political leaders have a duty too to sensitize the parents. From the statistics on performance in the brief I have received, I have noted the following. This means a higher transition rate, more learners will move to the next level of education, thereby reducing wastage. Two, while performing has improved, a very large number of candidates cannot adequately handle questions with practical applications, as you had uh, the UNEB uh, officials explain. The teaching appears to be theoretical, we have complained about this almost every year as we pass uh, this, uh, as we release these results. The teaching is theoretical and the emphasis is on breeding candidates on how to answer questions without understanding the underlying concepts, which just means really that 
there is no learning. The children are not learning. They're just be being drilled to reproduce what they've been told on paper just so they can pass an exam. And many times they can't pass that exam because they don't know what is relevant where. That's why a child ends up just getting zero. So when a question requires a candidate with the candidates to use those concepts, many are at a, at a loss. Teachers must therefore refocus the methods of teaching to ensure that learners are able to apply knowledge to their real life surroundings. These are the skills our children need in the 21st century. This is, the, this is what we're talking about, about skills. Skills are not just about technical education alone, even at a primary level, a child must come out with the skills in learning, getting really competent at, at that level at what they've been learning. That's how we get some of the students really doing excellent, excellently in the exam. And then others do so poorly that you can't believe that they were in school at all. There are still very many candidates obtaining very many years in school. And I'm aware that UNEB conducted a study to isolate the factors responsible for this in Eastern Uganda, where this phenomenon was widespread. The findings included rampant teacher and pupil absenteeism, poor teaching methods, lack of parental involvement in, in school affairs, lack of midday meals and involvement of the learners in other activities that affect their school attendance. I have shared these concerns with our stakeholders throughout the country. I have emphasized the problem of lack of meals because of the impact this has on a child's ability to concentrate and learn effectively. The Ministry of Education and Sports is undertaking targeted interventions in some of these districts to try and improve learning conditions and outcomes. I wish to add that important data is generated by UNEB on the effective or ineffective functioning of schools by districts or geographical regions, which we will unpack further to inform policy or strategic actions aimed at addressing weaknesses in the education service delivery. My ministry will then engage with the local and political leaders who must see it as their cardinal duty to work with their communities to improve the level of education of their children. Examination malpractice remains a challenge in the examination system despite the measures put in place by UNEP. I need not emphasize the obvious fact that malpractice is a serious threat to our national security because it erodes the credibility of our education system and reduces our competitiveness globally. The fact that perpetrators are teachers Put in charge of our children is a serious affront to the ethics and integrity of the teaching profession. On our part, the ministry will vigorously pursue all reported cases of head teachers or teachers who are responsible for all forms of fraud associated with examinations, including non-registration of eligible candidates or other forms of malpractice. These will be subjected to the disciplinary process by the Ministry's Reward and Sanctions Committee as prescribed in the Public Service Regulations and Teachers' Code of Ethics and Conduct. A number of these who were allegedly involved in a previous examination malpractice have already been summoned to answer related charges. Administrative sanctions may be preferred against them that include a possibility of submission to the relevant bodies for dismissal. 
I'm aware, though, of the inadequate provisions in the current law, as the chairperson of UNEP said, to curb malpractice. However, I wish to assure you that the UNEP bill has already been drafted and will soon get a cabinet approval before going to parliament for debate and enactment. I have authorized the withholding of those results for suspected candidates to allow UNEP and security agencies to complete investigations and for the persons involved to be given a fair hearing. I continue to call upon the chief administrative officers and the district service uh, commissions, more so in those districts that have featured prominently to take a firm grip on all teachers that have violated the trust reposed on them. There are districts that used to feature prominently but have now taken a turn for the better. I thank those and encourage them to keep on the path of righteousness for the sake of our children. I congratulate the candidates who have done well, the teachers who prepared them, and the parents who supported them. I thank the security agencies and all other persons who supported UNEB in the field conduct of the examination. Please note that the dates earmarked for the senior one selection exercise are 24th to 24th, 25th January 2019 at the Umasho grounds, Lugogo, while reporting to the schools where they will have been admitted is uh, the 18th Feb 2019. I should hasten to add, however, that the guidelines on school charges that were first issued by our PS in October 2017 uh, and a second circular date 29th October 2018 remain applicable. To release the 2018 Uganda primary living examination results for public use and I want to thank you all for listening to me and God bless you.